Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about training, development, and careers in the workplace. When it comes to training, always begin with an assessment. So assess training needs and address characteristics of the trainee, the organization, and the training to enhance learning. Then you choose an appropriate training method and you assess the training. So then you choose an appropriate training method or methods of training to pass on the knowledge, the skill, or the learning that needs to transition from the trainers to the audience. Finally, you assess training effects at the individual and organizational level. So training and development are important areas for people to actually go into. So those of you who are interested in teaching and training in the work environment, I think it's a good field to pursue. When it comes to training needs assessment, it should be a systematic evaluation of the organization, the job and the employee to determine where training is most needed and what type of training is needed at a given time. Needs assessment is a key part of developing clearly focused training goals in ways that provide the greatest benefit to the company. There are greater pressures for accountability for human source functions, particularly for the training function, um, which has oftentimes huge costs associated with it. So it's important to understand the organization's needs before spending the money or committing to the huge costs associated with training and development. Having a good understanding of the organization's culture is key for implementing a good training program. Unfortunately, sometimes there's lack of support for training among managers as well as employees, and they don't see why they're getting the training when, in fact, nobody has communicated uh, the strategy of the organization in what skills and competencies they might need in the months and years to come. So assess the organization's culture, do a good needs assessment, know your organization resources that are available to you, determine what resources the organization is able and willing to invest in the training program. Sometimes you might have to make a decision of buy versus develop strategy. If you have your own uh, professionals in the workforce or in the department that can develop the training that is needed, Good, if not, you may have to purchase that from consultants or other organizations externally. So you also have to determine whether you're gonna have trainers internally or you'll rely on external trainers. When it comes to organizational analysis, keep in mind that sometimes there's required or compliance related training. There's your competition that uh, might provide more training for their employees and some of your employees might be attracted to go and join them. Then there are laws and regulations that may not necessarily require training of the employees, but you must align your behaviors with them. So because the laws and regulations might be somewhat complex, it might require training and developing employees so the behaviors can always be aligned with the laws. You can have on-the-job training where a senior employee works with new employees to teach him or her how to perform the task. Most of us have been involved in on-the-job training where the company, once uh, we are brought on board, assigns a mentor formally or informally to work with us. So that person is basically performing on-the-job training if they show you what needs to be done and how to get it done. You can have lectures, training events in which an expert speaks to a group of workers to explain and impart knowledge. However, keep in mind lectures that are traditional in academic environment are not very effective in learning or retention of certain concepts. So training and development um, might have to be more closely associated with imparting knowledge on a step-by-step -step or chunk-by-chunk -chunk basis to employees. You can have simulators which attempt to balance the limitations of on-the-job training by providing a safe environment to train employees. You can have e-learning, which is training that is delivered through an online platform via computers or mobile devices that most of us are used to uh, through college or various training programs that are required 
by our organizations, right? Especially things that are required to be done on a month to month or on an annual basis. Overall, remember that people learn by doing. So getting feedback on our mistakes as well as on what we do right is probably a good way of passing on knowledge and reinforcing the expectations to employees. Nowadays, many companies are using virtual reality uh, in various simulations. We know that the sensory immersion is key to effectiveness because things look and sound as they were real. So the brain processes virtual reality as though it were a real experience. However, the success of this obviously requires measurement for your specific department or company. Not every organization or every situation is conducive to virtual reality training. So be careful in the training methods you use to pass on knowledge. You can use role plays, case studies, games and simulations, assessment centers, even executive coaching for high level individuals. There's also the behavioral modeling training, which involves a trainee observing a model, performing a behavior. Then he or she would practice it and receive feedback about his or her own performance. There's also diversity training to get people to be more team oriented and work more inclusively. It's training to increase team effectiveness or so communication skills, negotiation skills, and overall sensitivity training for the entire team so they get to know each other a little bit better and they can brainstorm and they can engage in the strategic development or implementation of those strategies. Overall, the onboarding and organizational socialization is the process of helping new employees to adjust to their new organization by imparting to them the relevant knowledge, the relevant skills, the behaviors that are expected, the culture of the organization, and the required attitudes uh, needed to successfully function within uh, the organization. That's what we call onboarding or organizational socialization. The orientation programs are designed to help welcome, to inform and guide new employees. Regardless of what training you use, you need to assess, right? So when we're making decisions based on numbers, we need to know whether it worked or not. So the Kirkpatrick's model has four levels of training outcomes or effectiveness. You can measure the results, you can measure the behavior, you can measure learning of the audience, you can measure the reaction. The lowest level would be the reaction. So if you ask somebody, did you like the training? Do you believe that it is relevant for the job? That's reaction. He or she tells you yes or no. So if that audience learned uh, and can demonstrate the new knowledge or the skill, that means he or she learned that this is the assessment we use in most college courses, right? Or you can go beyond just learning to behavior. Did the job behavior change on the parts of the employee? So you would be doing this weeks or months after the training has taken place to assess their behavior. Finally, the final level of assessment would be to evaluate the results. In other words, were there improvements in key organizational indicators that are attributable to the training, such as increased profit or decreased accidents or more engagement, more employee satisfaction or more customer satisfaction, et cetera. So that would be the actual result, which would be assessed months quarters or years after the training has taken place. By the way, you can use uh, Kirkpatrick's textbook on um, implementing the four levels of assessment for any of the training. So where you're looking at just the knowledge uh, that uh, people gained or the reaction or the behavioral changes in the workplace or actual maximization of profit or increase in uh, employee or customer satisfaction. So this little book can be handy by Donald Kirkpatrick and James Kirkpatrick. In summary, 
build a reputation for being an objective analytic and a rational professional. So I analyze the numbers, the data, and all the facts surrounding a situation to make evidence-based decisions. Good luck.